Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is January 27th, 2021, and this is episode 186. Today we're looking at Chang Chi. This is from Marvel. It is issue five, number five, in a five issue arc. And this comes in at a whopping $3.99. So still keeping that $4 price point, which is nice. Um, we get a nice cover here displaying uh, um, four of the houses of the Society of Martial Arts that came out of China. We've got the hand. He's the saber, she's the hammer, and she's the dagger. So if you recall, this is kind of this whole um, issue going on, who's going to lead the house. And there was another, uh, also the house of the staff, which was defeated by the house of the hammer, who's trying to take over. Um, so far, Chang chi has been kind of running around the world, uh, <laughs> trying to track down... Shi Hua is her name, his sister. These are all related family members. And their father, actually, Zheng Zhu, is a evil patriarch, I guess you want to call him. Uh, he's the one that created these houses. So at first they were supposed to protect all of China from invaders. And later on he was trying to use them for taking over the world, more or less. Um, she... Chi Hua, I think it's Chi Hua, is uh, the main villain in this comic, though, and she is haunted by ghosts from her past. So we get a little bit of a blurb right off the bat, kind of getting us up to date on what happened in the last four issues. You get, you get the roster here of who's participating in this comic, and uh, let's take a look at who worked on this. It's Jean Luen Yang is the writer. I don't know if it's Daiki or Dyke. Ruan is the artist, and Philip Tan is the flashback artist, with Sebastian Cheng as the colorist. Okay. So we jump right in. We've got Shi Hua has got her army of undead zombies that she's completely has under her control. They're called the Jingjiang. I didn't think I got that wrong. Jingji, maybe the Jingji, that's it. And despite the efforts of MI6 and the army, they are not able to stop this invading, this invading force. Fortunately, the other four houses of the under the the uh, control of the hand, I guess he's, he's the, considered the leader come in and start really knocking out the uh, the zombie army here. So things are going pretty well. They're trying to talk, track down Shi Hua. Meanwhile, the uh, wounds that Shang Chi suffered earlier on from one of the Zhang Chi, <laughs> it's got a little confusing here, um, is starting to suddenly progress rapidly. And he's losing his mind. He is actually turning, and maybe even turning into one of these Cheng Chis. You can see him getting very angry and suddenly punching the the building. He tells Sister Dagger and uh, Brother Saber to to get away. That he doesn't think he can control it. And right then, she she who shows up and gives him a good whack with her hammer, send him into a car. Um, He's trying to fight the effects of the wound. She's talking to him, just saying, just let it be. I should be, be in charge. Then the brother and the sister kind of step in. Hey, one of the reasons the sister's so little is she's only 14, but she, the way she's drawn in this, she looks like she's about eight. Um, and they get knocked away by Chang Chi just because he's trying to protect them at the same time. Um, a microchip is placed on Cheng Chi by his sister Su Chi. <laughs> Whew, I'm having trouble with these names. And as they say, it erupts on his forehead and it kind of pulls him to an almost kind of another dimension. He sees an image of his uncle who's giving him some advice 
His uncle was, if you recall, his uncle was actually a good man, while his own father was kind of evil and power hungry. So what we get is, I guess, all the, at this one point, he's able to stop the avenged souls, which was driving that zombie army. And this portal shows up, which he busts through and walks through. And we actually go visit the past. And what we see is a young Shi Hu um, protecting her brother from the father. And the father's not happy about it. Uh, he actually imprisons her for a little bit and then sends her to Russia to train with the House of the Hammer. And she becomes the best. Of course, her father berates her, saying that Cheng Chi is the best of the House of the Hand, and he did it three years sooner than you did. And she's younger anyway. But she progresses and she gets huge. As you can see how big she gets. I mean, she looks like a man. She's a man. So at one point they break loose and back to normal. And suddenly they're both grabbed by this huge powerful force. It turns out is the spirit of their father. And um, Chang Ching's able to break loose and knock, get an arm lock on the father. Um, and she, she, uh, she who is suddenly realizes she's, she feels a lot of loneliness and the spirit turns to dust all of a sudden. So, um, it's a little bit, a little bit confusing. I thought the story is pretty good. This is a recommend all on all. I think, I think the first four issues were real strong. This one's a little more complicated, um, but it does continue on. We get um, what we think is going to be a surrender for Shi Hu, but she actually um, gives Chang Chi another whack. He stops her just in time, but Chang Chi actually stops a bullet from taking her out from the uh, MI6 agent that is the uh, Chang Chi's ex girlfriend, by the way. So. She who is able to escape dives into the water and she's never seen again. Meanwhile, we head back to San Francisco. Chang Chi apologizes to Grandma Wang about just suddenly disappearing and destroying the apartment he was staying in. If you remember, um, the apartment came under attack. And um, he also, um, the grand, I think it's a grandniece or the niece of Grandma Wang shows up and she's she was supposed to go on a date with Chang Chi and turns out that uh, he tells her no you know what I've got too dangerous a life I don't want to I don't want your life threatened if you go out with me and she says wait listen I'm a lawyer my specialty is defending superheroes I'm okay with it okay so then we have this nice ceremony where Chang Chi is officially became becomes supreme commander. Um, they're going to light the eternal flame of his father, and he puts it out saying, we need a new flame for the new era. And that's what we get here. So that brings the end of this arc. We do get an epilogue, though, one page of epilogue, where they, they break for the night, and suddenly the spirit of his evil father shows up, telling Shang-Chi that he's going to end up just like him. So we'll see what happens. That's This is supposed to return later this year with the next arc. I do not believe it is called The Legend of Shang-Chi, which is being done by another art um, writer. Uh, I believe that's going to be a separate arc from the regular Shang-Chi. So recommend on this. I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, this last issue was a bit complicated just because what we went through and all the different stages. But um, the art was good. The action was there all the way through. Um, pretty terrific. This is what we want in a comic. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. I'm starting to lose my voice. This is Indie Comics Jones from the Temple of Tomes bidding you adieu. But remember to subscribe, leave comments, and like. Take care.